Hello, this is Aaron with InitComputers.com. Hola, bueno, este es Ron con InitComputers.com with another video for you today. I filed this one under software problems. Sync iPod, how to get your iPod syncing again with iTunes. When you attach an iPod to a USB port, it says it's connected and arrows go around for a few seconds, but an iPod is not showing up as a device on iTunes and no syncing takes place. Once, when you tried while online, it said my iPod might be corrupted and suggested reinstalling my iPod, but since it isn't showing up as a device on iTunes, you don't even know how you can do that. You have restarted your computer several times, used different USB ports, and installed iTunes 9.2. This is an older blog post, so you can kind of ignore that iTunes version. Obviously, there's versions greater, more recent than 9.2. Continuing on, you reset an iPod using a menu and select buttons together. If you're still able to use your iPod but it won't sync with iTunes, then please reinstall iTunes. A removing and reinstalling iTunes, QuickTime, and other software components for Windows XP article from Apple support has instructions to properly remove iTunes. Please remove Apple software in order as suggested. And I will include a link to my blog post on my website in computers.com in a description of this YouTube video so that you quickly access these two links from Apple. I'm not going to read over this in an entirety but remove and reinstall iTunes and other software components from Windows XP this particular page is written ex explicitly for Windows XP if you're using Windows Vista 7 or 8 then there's a link here on detailed instructions on how to remove and reinstall iTunes and related software components for Windows Vista, Windows 7, or Windows 8. Quickly, steps. Number one, remove iTunes and its related components from the control panel. Very important, don't uninstall these components in a different order or only uninstall some of them. Doing so might have unintended effects. So remove these components in order and remove all of them then restart your computer second main step is make sure that iTunes and its related components are completely uninstalled it details how to find specific folders that might still occur and then it has detailed instructions on how to remove these files finally main step number three reinstall iTunes and its related components once you've done that, restart your computer and then install the latest version of iTunes. One quick alert, there's an alert here about iPodService.exe. If you're not able to delete that service, then it has detailed instructions. Reboot your computer and then download and install iTunes. If you don't have latest version 9.2 on your computer, this is a older blog post, so ignore 9.2 because obviously there's versions much newer than that. I just want to show you their download link really quick. One quick, th well, one quick main thing is you can uncheck both of these. Send me iTunes updates and keep me up to date. You don't have to fill in your email address. That's an option. I'm not sure why they don't disclose that, but you can uncheck both and then don't enter an email address click download now or you could enter an email address and just check one or both or or may possibly none and still get I'm not sure why they don't disclose and stipulate that you don't have to have an email address you don't have to enter an email address to download iTunes hopefully this information was productive so far you have to make sure you remove and reinstall all software components that are used by iTunes. Sometimes if components like QuickTime and Bonjour aren't removed properly or reinstalled, iTunes won't work correctly. There might be a problem with one of these components and not just a main iTunes software. That's fine if you have them on an external hard drive. That's another caveat. All you would do is change iTunes media folder location and then consolidate. Another tip is to remove following folders even if they aren't deleted after uninstalling. See program file slash IP 
the bin and then C program file slash iTunes. So quickly, quickly in summation, you want to go over these instructions specifically and you have to remove those components that iTunes uses in the correct order and you must remove them all. If you don't remove them all or if you only remove a few of them that can affect iTunes and that can cause a problem when you go back to download and reinstall. So please just make sure that you follow these instructions to a T and then hopefully this will solve your problem and you will then be able to sync your iPod again with iTunes. You can always browse to anetcomputers.com for other possible potential tips and information and tricks to help you solve your most common computer problems. Thank you for listening. Adios.